I'm a 21-year-old woman and I now own the house I grew up in. My mom left it to me before she passed away from a stroke last year at age 46. It was unexpected, but I've come to terms with it. My parents got divorced when I was seven, and I used to split my time between my dad and mom. I was much closer to my mom because she understood me, while my dad seemed too busy and preoccupied with work and relationships. I didn't feel like he prioritized me, but it was okay as long as I had my mom a few years ago when I was 18 and just starting college my dad moved to Houston for work. Since then we haven't been able to spend as much time together and only see each other during the holidays two years ago for Christmas my dad brought his girlfriend Emily who was 47 years old along with her two daughters from a previous relationship with her high school boyfriend one was 17 years old and the other was 15 years old. They were never married but they had ended their relationship about seven years before she began dating my dad. We were very surprised because my dad had never introduced any girlfriends to our family dinners before. However, we warmly welcomed Emily and her children and tried our best to make her feel comfortable around us. We had a great evening together and everyone got along really well. Even afterwards when I spoke to my dad on the phone, Emily would always greet me kindly. Her kids were a bit shy and kept to themselves, but overall, we had a good relationship. After my mother passed away, I found out that she'd left the house to me. Thankfully, for some reason, my mother had divided all her assets in the will around my 18th birthday because she always liked to think ahead, even in more bad situations like these. Anyway, since I had just graduated, I decided to move in and find a job that wouldn't require me to move out anytime soon. I wanted to spend the next couple of years in my childhood home, just because it was my place of comfort. My father wasn't too pleased with my mom's decision, and he made sure that I knew about it. After he found out about the will, he and Emily had been very sweet and supportive around the time of the funeral, but my dad had been a little morose when he realized he wasn't getting the house back. This was the house that my parents bought when they got married, but my mother ended up keeping it after they got divorced. It was a fair agreement because my dad didn't have to pay alimony, even though my mom gave up her career to take care of me while he worked. So I believe that my mother taking the house in the settlement and letting my dad go without alimony was completely fair. She worked her way up afterwards with a little help from her parents and even made sure that I never felt sidelined or unimportant. She did both jobs well, and I didn't think it was fair for my dad to be annoyed that he didn't get the house back. He didn't talk about it much, but I could sense from his behavior that he wasn't pleased with that. I didn't care at the time because I was still grieving my mother and my dad. Being annoyed at her will was the least of my worries. She'd left all her wedding jewelry to him and all the gifts he'd given her as well, so that should have been enough for him. After the funeral, he returned to Houston with Emily, and I have been living alone here since then. Six months ago, my dad informed me that he was engaged to Emily and they planned to get married in his hometown. That's why he is now coming back here before the wedding instead of staying in a hotel since there are vacant rooms in our house. Their daughters were also homeschooled, so they wouldn't have a problem with schools either. I agreed with him, so I agreed to let them all move into my house and stay with me before the wedding for a couple of reasons. I was sick of living on my own and I did get along well with Emily, so I didn't think there was anything wrong with letting them live with me. My dad had also promised to split all the bills with me while they were living here, which meant I didn't have to worry about overspending on that either. And so they moved in here with me about a month ago and have been staying here since then. It was nice having them here and I felt a lot less lonely than I used to earlier when I was living by myself and believed that I could get used to this. I was afraid of the day when everyone would leave and go back to their usual lives. It meant that I would have to go back to my regular life alone too. However, two weeks ago, just three days before the wedding, my dad talked to me and asked if I would allow them all to permanently come back here. I didn't see that coming at all. But he explained that he'd come back here to make me feel a little more comfortable with the idea of being part of a family and living with them, since he didn't like the idea of me living all alone in this house. 
he'd planned to ease me into it, and now that he felt I was getting along well, he wanted to know if I'd be willing to turn this into a permanent thing. I wanted to say yes immediately, but then his behavior, when he learned that he wasn't getting the house back, kind of threw me off as much as I would have loved to make it a permanent arrangement. I didn't think it was such a good idea so soon, and I didn't want to make the mistake of acting on my emotions. I understood that this was the best way to deal with my strong feeling of loneliness, but that didn't mean I had to let them all live with me. It had only been a month since they moved in. Even though I wanted to agree, I ended up telling him that I needed some time to consider it. It was a gut feeling, but I just knew for some reason that it would be in my best interest to give this some time and not make a rash decision. I kept my personal feelings aside and told him that I'd inform him about my decision after the wedding. He looked annoyed but didn't push it. Ten days ago, they finally got married and we had a total blast at their wedding. They were supposed to stay here for a couple more days after the wedding and then move back. So I was preparing to let them know about my decision, which was a yes. But before I could get to that, all of them took off on their honeymoon without even telling me about it. Two days after their wedding, I woke up to find myself completely on my own, and they'd all left. But a lot of their belongings were still at my house, so I decided to make some calls, but nobody responded. For quite a while, and I continued to panic about it. I'd planned on telling them about my decision that day itself, but I couldn't even reach them for hours. Finally, around noon, Emily got back to me and informed me very casually that they'd all left for their honeymoon and wouldn't be back for a week. I was really surprised because I had thought they would at least let me know about their plans before leaving, if not invite me. It hurt my feelings that they didn't include me, but I didn't want to be petty. So I began by asking why nobody had told me about any of this. She gave me a weak excuse saying they had forgotten to inform me, but assured me not to be concerned because they would be back soon. I tried to explain to her that that wasn't the point at all, and my problem was that they'd just left without a word or even a goodbye, and that was rude of them. I said that I wanted to speak to my dad, but that's when her tone changed, and she said that my dad was busy and didn't have the time to speak to me. I still tried to keep my cool and told her to let me know whenever he had time so I could get in touch with him directly. And I said it politely, but she turned on me and all of a sudden she'd gone from this sweet person to a really snarky and mean stepmom. She told me that my dad was going to be busy for the next couple of days and asked me not to bother them, even though it wasn't necessary at all because I hadn't brought it up. She told me that I shouldn't freak out because I was left behind and mentioned that I was no longer a kid. My dad has a new family now, so I should accept it. When they return, she expects me to stop being dramatic and clean the house for them. Now I don't know who she thought she was talking to, but she sure as hell wasn't going to be talking to me like that. She hung up right after saying that, and my anger was literally out of the roof. I decided not to call my dad after that and thank the universe for not letting me agree to his suggestion before I'd seen this side of his new wife. There was no way in hell that they were living with me anymore so I personally packed all their belongings up as haphazardly and badly as I could, stuffed them in a couple of cardboard boxes and left them in the yard for them to find whenever they chose to come back. I didn't care what became of those things because they didn't belong to me and neither did they belong inside a house that was mine. After that it was life as usual for me and I tried not to think about the betrayal that I felt because of what my dad had done for no real reason. Yesterday they finally came back from their honeymoon and luckily I was at work when they found all their stuff in the yard. I also put new locks on the door so they couldn't come in. My dad was really angry when he called me. He said I was acting spoiled and overreacting because they don't think leaving me alone at home without telling me is a big deal. According to them, they didn't do anything wrong. I just told them to take their boxes and leave and if I saw them on my property when I came back home, I'd call the police. He cussed at me and then hung up, but I had to get back to work and couldn't waste my time worrying about that. When I got home after work, I noticed that they'd taken their things and left, and I thought that this was the end of it. But the most annoying bit was yet to come because around midnight my dad called me up and told me that Emily had something to say to me. 
she told me that she was sorry about the way she spoke to me and that she took it all back. She'd love to have a second shot at making amends with me and she didn't want to be on bad terms with me over something so petty. I asked her to be quiet and go away because I didn't want her apologies that weren't sincere. I knew she only pretended to be nice because I no longer allowed them to live with me. If she truly felt sorry, she would have apologized immediately after our phone call or even during her vacation. I'm sure my dad isn't sorry either, but when he realized that I wasn't going to forgive them, he decided to go all sentimental on me and told me that I was being heartless by not allowing them to live with me. He said that he was willing to split all the bills with me if I let him move back in. However, he desired to stay in this house because it brings up memories of my mother. Therefore, it would be very self-centered of me to evict them without considering the possible consequences. Apparently, he only returned here to feel more connected to my mother. Emily too mentioned that her behavior that day was just a result of being upset and didn't hold any significance. And even her kids missed me. So they wanted me to allow them to come back and let them have a fresh start here. But I wasn't having any of it. I'd always known that my dad had his eye on this house ever since the divorce. And now that I've seen this side of Emily, I didn't want to risk anything. I told him they could go back home because I wouldn't change my mind. Suddenly, my dad started crying and accused me of being selfish because I wouldn't let him live in the house. He said he had the best days of his life over a small disagreement I had with Emily. He also mentioned that I was being petty and mean for not going on their honeymoon and that my mom would hate this ugly side of mine. A. Ida for not letting my dad and his new family move back in with me after his new wife was rude to me and they didn't ask me to accompany them on their honeymoon vacation. Update 1. So the comments on my original post were definitely a reality check. I don't think some of you all need it to be that rude about it, but I get the point everyone was trying to make for the most part. I stuck with my choice and didn't allow my dad to come back home because honestly he doesn't deserve it. He has treated me badly and I don't want any more negativity from him in my life. At first it was nice because both he and Emily were kind to me, but once I said I needed more time to decide, they revealed their true selves. They probably got impatient and tried to scare me into letting them stay with me. But unfortunately, I'm not that weak. I'd rather be lonely than end up spending my time with the wrong people. I shouldn't have let them come here at all. Because his reaction when he learned that the house's ownership had been transferred to me and not him should have been enough for me to realize how materialistic and selfish people can be when it comes down to it. I'm happy that Emily decided to start a pointless argument with me, which ultimately caused major problems for herself. If she hadn't done that, we could have all been a happy family. Although maybe there was a chance for that to happen, I won't be fooled by their insincere actions anymore. I was lonely. I miss my mom and all my grandparents had passed on already, so I needed a family to be my support system. But these people are definitely not up for that job and I'm relieved. I realized that before it was too late. It's been a couple of days since they left, but my dad's been calling me regularly and keeps texting me because I'm not answering his calls. He thinks that I should at least give them one last chance at fixing things, but they don't deserve it. They blew their one chance. And if I give them another one, I'm sure they'll blow it too. And that will backfire on me more than anyone else. So it doesn't make sense to take that risk. I feel bad that I'm treating my dad like this, but there's not much I can do in such a situation. You get what you give. In his situation he didn't really make an effort to build a connection with me, so he can't be upset when he realizes that I won't make important choices based on him and his emotions. But he never did that for me. Additional update, it turns out my dad is not just persistent, but he really wants to move in. Guess why? because he didn't take a break from his job like he'd claimed to. He'd been fired a couple of months ago before his wedding and had been living off of his savings so far, which was plenty. But now, after an extravagant wedding and a lavish honeymoon, he finally told Emily that they couldn't afford to go back once again and try their luck in Houston because he wouldn't be able to afford rent there. Emily stopped working to take care of the children when she met my dad, so she couldn't assist. Now they had to find a place to live. 
My dad assumed I would let them live with me without discussing it with Emily. Emily didn't know any of this until he revealed the truth, which is why she apologized. So I was right about her not having any real regrets about her behavior. She's as fake as it gets. But that's the kind of wife my dad deserves anyway. He contacted me today and requested me to let them move in just a couple of days until he's able to find a proper job that pays well enough for him to be able to afford to move out. But I explained to him that I had no intention of doing that. They were mean to me and I didn't want that negativity around me. He's an adult. He should have known that if he didn't have a job, then he shouldn't have spent so much money on a wedding and a fancy honeymoon. I get wanting to show off wealth, but that's only for people who can actually afford it, not for men. With a stay-at-home wife and two teenage stepdaughters, he was well aware of his responsibilities, but he chose to ignore them. And that is not my fault. And I refuse to feel guilty for putting myself above him. They can sort things out for themselves because none of this is my problem anymore. I texted him back and told him the same things that I said here but tried to be a little more polite than I was here because I didn't want to come off as someone who was mocking him or whatever. However, he decided to see it as a joke and said I would have to experience pain for my actions towards him. I'm not sure how to react so I chose not to respond because no matter what I say now he will twist it and hold me responsible. So it's better to just not say anything and let him wallow in his misery. That's hardly my problem now. Update 3. My dad decided to leave the city today. But why would he ever leave without letting me know what a huge letdown I am as a daughter? He could have left silently, but he is who he is and so is his wife. So they chose to make a whole thing of it. I last spoke to him about three weeks ago, but I didn't check up on him after that, and neither did he bother to reach out to me. But today, he and Emily both sent me texts saying that they were delighted to inform me that Emily's ex-boyfriend had decided to sponsor their trip back home and was even going to let them all back because he'd suddenly realized that he needed to see his daughters too. Emily had complete legal responsibility for her daughters and her ex-partner did give money to support the children, but he was always too occupied to spend time with them. He had given Emily, who is my dad, sufficient time to try and solve their issues on their own. However, when he realized they were incapable of doing so, he stepped in to fix the problems himself, which is good for his daughters, I suppose. At least some dads do step up, even if it's too late. They didn't tell me all of this, but I know this could have been the only possible explanation because they did post a picture of their daughters a couple of hours ago, captioning it with Lucky Charms and the Four Leaf Clover sticker. So I'm smart enough to know what the real story behind Emily's ex's sudden epiphany might be and why he's funding their trip back home. I'm not sure why he paid for all their plane tickets, but I think Emily's manipulation and stubbornness may have influenced his decision. I know she has those qualities and I've witnessed them before. I don't know all the details but I'm just happy they're going away and I won't have to see them anymore. I've also realized how easy I had it after I went through some stories that people shared here about their crazy families. Rest assured, my dad is a little too worried about his reputation to even try and harm me in any way whatsoever because he knows I'm not going to hesitate in calling the cops on him. Even if he does, I have enough training to know how to defend myself so there's no need for me to worry. And now that they're going away, I have even fewer reasons to think about them. So it's good news for me. I suppose. Occasionally, I still feel a bit lonely, but instead of feeling sad about it, I choose to spend time with my friends because I believe that's a better way to handle such situations. I completely shut everyone out after my mom passed away and I hadn't even realized how alone I'd become until I read the comments here. It's going to take a while, but I'm going to try and make the best of my life now because I do have a stable job. I make a decent income and I have my own house, which is not something a lot of people my age have. I'm thankful to my mom for this. I have amazing friends who really care about me and what else could anyone ask for? If I ever have another problem, I know I can rely on Reddit's wonderful people to help me out once more.